Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and recently I realised that there is someone who I've known about for ages but I've never actually responded to him, despite having used clips of him in my videos. So today we are going to be taking a look at Del. And no, I do not mean the upside down triangle, I mean Del from beyond the imaginary curve. No! I'm sorry Del, but you do not get a choice in this matter. NASA is telling me that I have to do this. But anyway, today we are going to be looking at a video where Del talks to some people on the street. So, let's see how that went. I'm going to ask you some questions. Usually I try and kind of lead in with this and, and get some grounds on reasoning and stuff. Do you, do you understand like logical reasoning and that type of process? Yeah. Well, can I ask you what you're studying? Uh, I'm doing zoology. Zoology. Have you heard of Flat Earth? Uh, yeah. What's your thoughts on it? Um, I don't think that's flat. You don't think it's flat? No. So something that I find rather interesting, and I don't know if Dell is aware of this, but Flat Earth is actually a very useful topic if you want to explore what someone's logical reasoning is. Because there are so many different ways of arguing against Flat Earth, everybody has a different way in which they argue against it. Of course, you have people that argue against Flat Earth by assuming what Flat Earth is and then arguing against that. And then when you usually say this is what Flat Earthers actually believe, then they have a little bit more of a difficult time arguing against it. You also have people that argue against Flat Earthers by saying, well, we've got pictures of the Earth or there are satellites up in orbit. These are things that Flat Earthers don't accept as evidence right off the bat, so no Flat Earther is going to be convinced by them. And then you've got people that say, well, if the Earth were flat, then there would have to be so many different people that would be in on the conspiracy and they just would not be able to keep it a secret. Now obviously Flat Earthers will deny that there'd have to be so many different people in on the conspiracy, however, I think that it's actually pretty solid. And that is because you'd have to have NASA employees, Google employees, meteorologists, pilots, all kinds of scientists in on the conspiracy. Sooner or later, you are going to have a whistleblower and that whistleblower will bring a whole lot of evidence to the table, but that hasn't happened for Flat Earth. But the last way that I tend to find people will respond to Flat Earth is by mentioning experiments that have been done that show that the Earth is not flat. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. This is, this is where I want to go about the logical reasoning, and I'm asking people as individuals, so you know what an appeal to authority is? Uh, yeah. You, you know, the, these types of fallacies that people invoke, you know, bandwagon, yada yada. So I do have a problem with the way that a lot of people use something like appeal to authority. So the way that it will generally go is someone will say, well, I'm going to trust the experts on this. And then someone who disagrees with that will say, that's an appeal to authority. There is a difference between deferring to an authority because you don't have expertise in a subject and appealing to authority to state that something is true. If I ask you as a, a man, man to man, mm -hmm. if you could reason with me and convince me that the Earth was a globe, how would you go about that? Um, well, like the experiment where you shine two lights between a box, and then if the Earth, uh, over like a long distance, shine yep. a laser, and if the Earth is flat, you'd be able to see those two lights and right. detect them. But uh, if you do that, you don't see them. Right. So you see it being lower if it's far enough away, I think like 17 miles there. Can I ask you where you got that information from? Um, was it a YouTube video or one of these type things? Yeah. So there are a few things. I find that it's quite ironic that a flat earther asks a globe earther, you get that from a YouTube video, when most things that flat earthers get are from YouTube videos. And the second thing is, that experiment sounds awfully similar to the behind the curve Netflix documentary experiment. You know, the one in which Geronism just casually gave evidence that the Earth was a globe. Have you conducted that yourself? I have not. So I think that a big problem that Flat Earthers have is that not everybody needs to undertake every experiment ever to make sure that they can verify the results. In fact, setting up an experiment where you control for different variables can take quite a bit of time. It is far easier to just look at the countless times that the experiment has been done already rather than doing that same experiment expecting a different result because conspiracy. Have you analysed it? 
Uh, I've not analysed it. No. Uh, well, the things like the refractive index and how light would function through the mediums, different temperature, different pressure, different density, how these would be factored into these types of things? I have not, no. You've not? But the thing is, there have been experiments that have been done to account for things like atmospheric refraction. For example, when Alfred Russell Wallace conducted the Bedford Level Experiment and controlled for refraction, he found curvature that would be consistent with what we'd expect to see. Is that the only thing that you could offer me in regards to the, the Earth being a globe? Um, pictures from the moon landing, but then I don't really know if I believe the moon landing. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about the moon landing is it would have been impossible to fake the moon landing using the technology that was available at the time. And the thing is, if the moon landing were fake, then it should be rather easy to you know, fake a moon landing using nothing but technology that would have been available back in 1969. However, this is not something that I have seen anybody attempt at all. So that's again, if I was to reason with you and I was to, for me that would open a can of worms up. If that was to set a, a precedent, a standard, you, you that, that knew that I could say you will listen. I've got pictures of Mickey Mouse. Okay. So I barely understood any of that. There was something about opening up a can of worms and pictures of Mickey Mouse. Is it just because I don't have an accent that I find it difficult to understand his accent? Or do people even with that accent find it difficult to understand Dell? Because I do know that people sometimes find it difficult to understand what I'm saying, despite New Zealand being the one place in the world that does not have an accent. Do you not accept that as scientific valid reasoning for Mickey Mouse's existence being objectively true? No, I suppose you wouldn't. No. So, do you think it's reasonable then to opt for what you see two-dimensionally on a screen as being valid reasoning for a belief? I mean, you could get into the fact that you can't really believe anything, because unless yep. you can conduct something yourself... Yep. So yes, there is quite a bit to unpack here. Yeah, if you were to just deny anything that you were shown on your computer, then you would have to essentially do every experiment for yourself to verify that it's true. So I don't know about everyone else, but I do not have the resources to be able to build a really long particle accelerator in order to smash particles together to verify the results that they're getting at CERN. I really don't think that denying everything is a logical way to go about science. Yeah, sure, if you have issues with a particular study or you have issues with a particular experiment that has been done, yeah, point out those issues and maybe your issues may be valid, but don't just deny it because you haven't done it yourself. If you were in a court of law and you just decided to deny forensic evidence because you had not done any experiments yourself, I can guarantee you that you would not be winning that case. Now as for his claim of I have photos of Mickey Mouse, does that make Mickey Mouse real? Don't just rely on photos for evidence. And what I mean by that is what is the context? Are there people that are saying that they have met a real life Mickey Mouse? Because if there are a whole lot of people that are saying that they've met Mickey Mouse, it's not just some guy in a suit and that there is a particular place that you can go to actually meet Mickey Mouse, then there might be something to that. Of course, that claim would seem rather outlandish, but if there's photographic evidence and there's a whole lot of people saying, hey, yeah, I have actually seen Mickey Mouse, then there might be something to it. A good example of this is the Statue of Liberty. There are heaps of people that have gone to the Statue of Liberty and say that it's real. There are pictures of the Statue of Liberty. Is it real? Yeah. It would be absurd to just deny that the Statue of Liberty exists all because you haven't been there yourself. Um, and that's the point. Do you not think that's reasonable to be that way? So, so, if, so if another man for you make a claim to me about the objective world, if I kind of demonstrate that to myself, directly measure it, observe it, would you say that's scientific or unscientific? There's so much data involved in a lot of scientific experiments and not one person could um, carry them out. Yeah. So yeah. it's debatable. Um, one of my modules is philosophy and looked at epistemology. Yeah. And um, it's... There's a lot of different theories out there that you could believe in one thing or another and you, could, yeah. you can never truly know anything. So he makes a good point here. How can you truly know anything? Flat Earthers will say, trust your senses, but your senses can lie to you. And if you were to have something like alcohol, then your senses can most certainly not be trusted. I can remember times when it just felt like the whole world was spinning and I was lying in bed. So if we go by the trust your senses logic, then uh, the earth is spinning. 
Now you could try and say, oh well, you're a drunk, it doesn't count. But there's times when you're sober in which your senses can play tricks on you. There are things called illusions. You know, optical illusions where it looks like one thing, but it's actually another. So just trusting your senses isn't a great idea. So if we can't trust our senses, then what can we actually trust? Well, the way that I view it is if something is important, then we have the scientific method to try and discover more about that thing. And that's why things like experimentation is great, because you try and control for as many variables as possible to try and get a clearer picture of what's actually going on. And on top of that, you have the peer review process to account for things like human error. Of course, it's not all perfect, but it's far better than just trusting your senses or denying everything. Um, so, so if a man makes a claim to me, I expect to be able to demonstrate it practically and physically. But one of the things that flat earthers have a problem with is that they don't actually understand the claims that are being made. I can show the Cavendish experiment all I want, but if flat earthers don't actually understand the claims that are being made about gravity, then the Cavendish experiment is not going to convince them. So the problem is that flat earthers want to skip straight to the demonstrations without understanding what is to be expected. And that's why they often demand ridiculous experiments, which if these experiments were to actually have the results that they expect, that would actually be evidence against the globe. For example, if water stuck to a basketball because of gravity, then that would be evidence against gravity as we know it, not for gravity. Do you, would you think that sounds reasoning to go on? Um, yeah. Yep. So, so again, I'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. If there's a globe, can you reason with me? Can you can you convince me? By the way, I've not got. I, I, I'm not invested in anything. Uh, you know, one way or the other. I experience the Earth as being a level plane. Mm -hmm. That's that's my immediate experience. Do you experience that? Um, depends how far you can actively see. Because, like, for example, if you go to like the seaside yep. and you look out in the ocean, eventually they are stopped. You can see a, see a slight curvature from left to right. Uh, from left to right, and then you also see it well, when it's further away. I've the conducted side. these types of things, and the horizon's called the horizon because it's a horizontal. So from one side to the other, it's a perfectly straight line. Well, that's just simply not true. The horizon does curve. It's just that sometimes it is imperceptible to the human eye because, well our senses are limited. For example, in this image, the horizon looks pretty flat. However, if we stretch the image up and down, we find that the horizon is actually curved. What I postulated was is an equilateral triangle. So if you're an observer and you think that you're seeing a curve left to right or you see something going over a curve in the distance, if I'm at 60 degrees to you and the object, what I should then get is a definite you know, drop from a centre point left to right. Do you agree with that? But I don't do physics, but yeah. Yeah, but you, would, you, you so. can reason, you understand what I'm saying to you. Mm -hmm. But in reality, that's not there. The horizon's a, a perfect straight line. If I put a, a, a spirit level up or a tripod and a pan, you know, over a span of 180 degrees, there's no deviation from the spirit level and the horizon. Again, this claim is just simply not true. This is something that I actually tested for myself when taking a flight from New Zealand to Australia. And not only that, there are plenty of examples of people showing this to not be the case. Like this image here shows that the horizon does not rise to eye level. The liquid in those are both at the same level and one is behind the other, yet the horizon hasn't risen to that same level. Well, it depends how far out you're seeing, because I think there is. I've not conducted the experiment myself, yeah. but from what I've perceived, there has been. See, what I'm getting to here is the whole point. That This is what I'm trying to uncover and establish, is that people have these beliefs, mm -hmm. but they don't fully comprehend why. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you're, you're citing things that you would admit yourself. You don't fully comprehend them. You've never conducted them. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to uncover is that it's a bit flaky, the reasons for why people accept these things to be true and, and expose that. When it comes to a lot of people, they don't feel the need to look into things like whether the earth is actually a globe or not because it doesn't really affect them. Most people will have a job that they make money from and then outside of the job they like to relax and have fun. It is fine if you want to spend hours upon hours researching flat earth. That is up to you. But other people just don't have that kind of commitment to something that they think is a bonkers idea. 
So yeah, but there's there's so much information in the world that yep. you can't physically go about and verify every single yep. piece of information. You've yep. There's just too much information. Of course, for, for specific aspects, mm -hmm. but for two human beings that experience the world directly, I think it has to be something that's accessible to anybody, and we should be able to reason and point to these things quite freely. The problem is, though, is that when people bring up evidence as to why the Earth is not flat, Flat Earthers will just make up a reason why it's consistent with a Flat Earth. Essentially what Flat Earthers try to do is they try to make Flat Earth unfalsifiable. Because when something is unfalsifiable it cannot be shown to be false. And what Flat Earthers don't seem to realise is that when there's no condition under which your model can be shown to be false, then it cannot be tested. And if you cannot test something then you cannot show it to be true or false. You cannot show it to be better than anything else or worse than anything else. And the thing is, the globe model is falsifiable, but to falsify it, you have to properly understand what it's saying. But anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this video for today. There's still quite a bit to this Dell video, but that's with another group of people. So let me know if you want to see more of Beyond the Imaginary Curve. No! As I said, Del, you don't really get a choice in this. This is up to everyone else. But anyway, make sure you do all the good things to help this video in the algorithm. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell notification icon so that you keep up to date with all my latest videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Hugh Jars, NC Nutkin, Shaki, Wolfie, Mori, Graymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, and Sarcha Campbell. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.